Um, I'm actually here to talk about the convergence of some really interesting technologies. I'm the technology guy here. I'm the geek. Um, and I'm going to talk about some technologies called blockchain, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and the cloud. If you remember our very first speaker, Erica uh, Orange, she was talking about how technology is changing. Technology is changing at an ever-increasing rate. Uh, that's happening today, that's happening this year, in, in 2018. These technologies I'm going to talk a little bit about, and I'm going to uh, show you and describe a couple of examples, real-life examples of projects I'm working on around the world that are showing how these technologies actually are converging. It's really important for us and for companies to stay ahead of technology. What happens if you don't? What happens if you fall behind? What happens if you're not staying up with the most current technologies? Well, we heard a great example of what happened this week. Toys R Us, a brand that every one of you know, probably most of you have visited, at least anyone over about 35 or 40 years old, has been 100 times in their stores. They're out of business. They filed bankruptcy after 70 years. And why? Because they didn't stay up with technology. They weren't monitoring it. They weren't engaged with it. They weren't implementing it within their, within, their, within their stores. So what I want to talk about today is how we stay uh, in front of that technology and just a little bit about why I think it's so important. So let me kind of set the stage a little bit. Uh, my background, as you can read in my bio, has all been with technology companies. Uh, I worked uh, my early career with Hewlett Packard. I learned a lot about the importance of hardware, about integrating hardware, about developing solutions in hardware. Uh, I then went to work for Apple Computer for about 10 years and learned about the importance of the integration of hardware and software and developing solutions and technologies that were easy to use for everybody to use. Uh, after H after uh, Apple, I went to work for Cisco. At Cisco, I learned the importance of taking all of these components now and applying new technologies to them. Some of these new technologies that, that we started to deploy were things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and how to use that technology uh, for your benefit to create alerts and notifications about your network and how they were being used and threats that were happening and potential failures of your network. So I learned a lot about that. And then the last four or five years, I've been working very closely in things, new technologies like blockchain. Uh, so one of the questions I get a lot is, well, what exactly is blockchain? A lot of people think blockchain is Bitcoin and, uh, and cybersecurity. Basically, what blockchain is is what's called a distributed ledger. Think of, that, think of what that means. Distributed means these files are distributed across hundreds of, of computers that are networked together. A ledger is basically a debit and a credit. So managing that debit and credit uh, within the platform across hundreds of computers actually provides a lot of benefits. Number one, it makes it very hard to hack. It makes it so that cybersecurity technologies can actually prevent those things from happening. The other thing that it does, it, it creates a trust, a level of trust for that data and that technology that may exist within each one of those nodes. So what I want to talk a little bit about today now are some examples of how that technology is being used. Uh, let's talk about one of them. The first one that I want to share with you is a company called Maersk. Maersk is in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. They're one of the largest shipping uh, and logistics companies in the world. Uh, let me give you a little example of what some of their challenges are as a company. They manage about 150 ports around the world. These are ports where vessels are coming in and out continuously through the ports. They also have uh, about two to three million containers. These are large containers that are coming again in real time in and out of the ports. They're trying to manage where they are oper operationally. So they have a really difficult time managing that. And at the same time, they're trying to track about $4 trillion worth of business as all of this is moving around the world. Let's take one example. Let's take one vessel, 
One vessel, for example, requires about 200 interactions, just moving from point A to point B, 200 interactions with individuals. It also requires uh, coordination with about 30 other companies. It also requires about four inches of documentation. Remember, this is where one vessel at one time between two ports. Vast amounts of data is getting generated. So they've decided to use blockchain to help improve operationally uh, many of those ships as they're co going in and out of ports. They're using blockchain to create what are called smart contracts. Contracts between those 200 interactions, between those four inches of documentation they can now reduce. So they've been able to identify that they can actually increase by about 15% the number of ships that they can ship around the world, at the same time reduce by about 10 or 15% their operational costs. Those are huge savings for companies that are, are worth billions and billions of dollars. Another example I'd like to share with you is a company called Open. Open is the first end-to-end uh, -end logistics supply chain platform for commodities. This will affect about 30 different commodities. Commodities are things like rice and grain and oil and gas uh, and metals, all different types of metals. So it's about a 150-year-old business that has never had any technology before. It's all manual today. Uh, there's lots of fraud. There's lots of pricing manipulation that happens because there's no transparency of the, of the transactions. Uh, there's lots of uh, theft uh, and a lot of corruption in the business. Uh, the other thing is that it, it's, it really is a pretty lengthy process. It takes about five to six weeks for this entire process to, to be completed uh, from beginning to end. And again, there's, it, it's fraught with a lot of danger. So with those as kind of the parameters, uh, we've decided to use blockchain, again, as a, as a, as a, as a back-end platform to help manage all of these transactions, to create smart contracts, to improve the efficiencies and operations of this. We've been able to determine that we can take this five to six week process and actually reduce it down to minutes by automating this, by uh, 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 providing technology to it, by really increasing the efficiencies. Uh, of, of each one of these operations. And with blockchain now, it creates transparency so that you can see every single operation that would normally take five or six weeks, you can see the operations of setting up financing, setting up warehousing, setting up the transportation, set it up, setting up shipping, setting up the, uh, the funding for it, setting up the insurance. There is a hundred different processes along that. And in the past, no one's been able to see the whole thing. So you've never been able to really verify if you're getting a good price for something. And the other problem that, that, that exists is that there's, a, there's about 100 middlemen that are in the middle of this, this process. They're taking a little piece of, of, of the cut of, of, those, uh, of the transactions. That results in about a 20 to 25 percent margin. So within the, the price of a commodity, and let's say you're paying a dollar for, uh, for an ounce of of, uh, of copper, 25% of that is useless. It's just a middleman that's trying to take a cut. We've been able to cut that completely out by using blockchain, machine learning, and AI. So it really is creating some tremendous efficiencies. The other thing that we can do, because now we have all of the data end to end, we can start running machine learning and AI models against each one of these processes. Number one, to pr improve uh, efficiencies, but also to give the buyer or the seller a better view of what, that, what exactly that transaction is costing and how long it's gonna take. So for example, by using some machine learning models now that we have all of that data, we can set up uh, alerts that say, well, you, I, I want an alert that tells me whenever I'm shipping uh, copper from Shanghai to Chile, uh, during the month of January, tell me what the average price is, sh the, sh the shipping price for that. Or tell me what the logistic services or insurance services are for this particular month, for this particular kind of commodity uh, during this particular time of the year. We've never been able to do that before without having all of that data at our fingertips. We can do that now. 
And finally, the last example I have is a company that I work with in Israel called Iguazio. Iguazio has built a machine learning intelligent platform that actually integrates all of this technology together seamlessly. Uh, I mentioned I used to work for Cisco. I worked for a business unit called Smart Services. Smart Services was about a $3 billion business. Uh, it took Cisco about three years and about two or 300 engineers to create this smart services application that actually did predictive analytics on your network to be able to anticipate when you may be having a failure on your network. What we did using the Iguazio platform and this, this integrated technology has been able to do in about two weeks with one engineer what it took Cisco three years and hundreds of engineers to do. So you can imagine now the kind of things that we can do, the kind of platforms we can create, the kind of integration that's happening now between blockchain and machine learning and AI and the cloud. All of these things are coming together. They have not been proven until just recently. Blockchain really was not ready for production. 16 of the largest banks now are implementing blockchain projects. So blockchain is now ready. Uh, it's been proven, it's been validated, it has been certified. Machine learning is much more mature now. AI is much more mature. Companies now really trust in the cloud now. So the cloud is now a viable place to store a lot of this information. So I guess my point now is that all of these technologies ha have converged. They're now uh, uh, ready to go to market. They're now production ready. And now it's up to us to actually apply these new technologies to new problems that exist today. Um, my goal is that we can work together on this, that we can find new solutions. Uh, I'm a continuous learner, so I love to learn about new technologies. And I think every company in the world has to be a technology company. If you're not, you will be out of business, just like Toys R Us uh, had to file bankruptcy this year. Thank you.